Hi there, this is Outdoor Gear Chat. I'm Wayne. Um, we're on episode 22. Uh, 22, <laughs> blimey. And we're talking, sorry, I didn't talk a little, yeah, register that. But we're talking glasses and goggles in today's episode, I I. Uh, I'm joined as always by Kathy. Hi. Hi, or I I, Wayne. How are you doing? Aye, aye. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> so today, with our sunglasses and goggles, we have um, an eyewear expert with us uh, today, all the way from Julbo in France. It is uh, International Area Manager for Julbo, Barnaby Grisson. Bonjour et bienvenue, Barnaby. Bonjour. Uh, if I would have to say in English, I would say I, I, I. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, you hey, so hi, everybody. Uh, <laughs> super happy to join uh, you uh, for, for this call. Uh, and yeah, I'm more than happy to give you some uh, uh, some some information about uh, where we come from, Jibo, and having this conversation together about how important it is to uh, think correctly when we uh, try sunglasses on. Awesome. And then, uh, well, do, do, would you like to start off with some uh, background on Jibo? For us, Barnaby. What, yeah, yes. where where's the company come from? For those for those people who might be listening that that may not have as much awareness of your brand and your products as well, that'd be fascinating. Yep, absolutely. Um, to talk about Jubo, what could I say? Company was started in 1888, so we could call that an old lady. Well, this yeah, is what we well. call it in France. <laughs> uh, 1888 in a very small village. Uh, in the Jura Mountains, the Jura Mountains, for you to try and imagine where this is, it's about an hour away from Geneva, if you go up north. So if uh, most commonly people would be going down south from Geneva to go and try and reach the Alps, but there's some really nice mountains also up north from this uh, Geneva area on the French side. Um, at the very beginning, Julbo was, um, designed so that we could have some sunglasses to um, uh, help the people coming up on the glaciers in the Alps to pick up some crystals. And at the time, so that's a long, long, long time ago, we then first developed these blue colored uh, sunglasses with side shields in glass, actually. And the idea was to try and help out these people uh, that was most commonly getting blind because of the intensity of the sun uh, onto the glaciers and the reflection of the UV light on the uh, like snow or the ice up into the ice. Um, and of course, protecting them also against the elements because by hitting the rocks to go and fetch these crystals, then with protective sunglasses, they could do that in a, in a safer way. So that's the very origin of where we come from. Then during the, the years, we've started doing a lot of development with mountaineering uh, people. Uh, and so that's why throughout the years, uh, we've always tried to develop products that were coming with something new, uh, were coming with something that didn't exist at the time. Every time that was our leitmotiv, uh, to try and bring something uh, for all the outdoor and mountaineering um, enthusiasts. Uh, today, to give you some idea, so the company is pretty old, but still family-owned, uh, independent. That's very important for us. It gives us a lot of capabilities when it comes to product development. We pretty much unlimited, so that's pretty good. Uh, but being independent is also uh, having the capability to um, do some absolutely outstanding servicing for our customers. Uh, that means that uh, we repair pretty much every frames that we come across. That means that uh, all the spare parts you find on sunglasses uh, that you could uh, buy from Julbo, we actually keep them five years uh, after uh, that the product is out of collection. So there's a lot of things we do uh, to uh, bring this very spe special service uh, for the people that uh, want to, to to discover what the world looks like with Jibo sunglasses on. <laughs> nice line. <laughs> I actually made it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's because I'm passionate. I'm totally passionate about the brand. And uh, that's what we try to do. That's what we try to share with, uh, with our fans. Uh, so once again, really being independent is very important for us. 
and always taking up to where we come from. We come from the mountains, we come from providing sunglasses for the very extreme environment. Uh, and therefore, we would be able, I guess, to, to have some conversations in these topics. Uh, the importance of the details is very is key. And that, that, that leads nicely into the next question, I guess. What is, what's, what, you know, what, and you've explained a little bit about the product development there, but what, what's the difference between normal sunglasses that people might wear, fashion sunglasses, I suppose, uh, as opposed to sports sunglasses or, and then the products that you're describing there? Fashion sunglasses or what we could call lifestyle sunglasses. There's a lot of different namings to, uh, to introduce this, uh, this category. Um, are most commonly going to be sunglasses uh, with a style. So the, the very only and unique feature that will be required is how does the uh, frame fits on everyone's face. So that's uh, uh, for the uh, lifestyle and, uh, and fashion sunglasses. When it comes to sports sunglasses, uh, depending on the sports discipline we want to, 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 to address sunglasses for, uh, we then have some very specific um, uh, features. Uh, if we talk about uh, mountaineering or glacier sunglasses, because uh, both can be uh, combined on one same type of sunglasses, this is an example. So that's called the Jumbo Shield. Uh, there's a couple of features that are mandatory. First of all, for the mountaineering, you must need the very best lenses quality in terms of protection. So we'll talk about it a bit later on, I guess. Uh, but there's different levels of protection. And when it comes to mountaineering, you must need the very best sun protection, UV protection for your eyes. There's another feature that's uh, very important is to have the capability to have some side shield. These side shields will avoid any kind of UV light to, to go through uh, in between the frame, your cheeks and straight into your eyes. So that's mandatory. You must have that when you talk about mountaineering sunglasses. And the very last bit, is having the capability to have some adjustable and some cords that you can attach to the frame. That's very important. So these are the three main um, features. And then depending on the brands, depending on the models, you're gonna have some extra features like uh, ventilation, like specific grip on the nose and so on and so on. When it comes to, um, let's say cycling sunglasses, trail running sunglasses, so that's another discipline. Then we're going to find some other very specific uh, features. So here you've got one model called the Ultimate. As you can maybe see on the camera, it's maybe not easy, but you can easily think and believe that it's very lightweight. So mm -hmm. that's one of the features that's key. Uh, when you're practicing endurance sports, you must pretty much forget that you're wearing sunglasses. So that's why the lightweight is very important. Another thing, when it comes to the lenses, we're not going to be targeting specific, specific high protection lenses uh, because the, the environment is not always extreme, but we will be targeting specific lenses, colors uh, that will, for example, taking about, talking about this specific product, it will enhance the contrast on the road. So, the idea when it comes to performance on glasses is to have lenses that will really help you to have a better view, uh, a better understanding of the terrain. Uh, then, of course, the grip is very important because it may be a little bit bouncy. So most sunglasses in this product category will have grippy uh, temples on the sides, on the nose, knows, uh, yeah. a lot of ventilation. Uh, most commonly, all the lenses will be equipped with uh, anti-fog treatment to make sure that when you breathe out <laughs> your cycling day or trail running day, uh, hopefully there will be as less fog that will be uh, building up into the lenses. So that's giving you a, a, some quick, uh, um, well, not that quick, because I do take mm. some time when I talk about it, but features about the different types of sunglasses we use according to the sports disciplines. That's fantastic. Thank you for the, yeah. For, thank you for the overview. I guess the the difference between the sort of the glacier sunglasses or the mountaineering ones and the and the the sort of the other spa as well is you don't need that. I get from from the early product de development you're not going to get as much 
stuff bouncing back into your face you know you're going to get flies on a, on a bike for example but yeah when you're up yeah. on a mountain the yeah it's you, that eye protection is a little bit more um needed i suppose isn't it and, yeah. and then that's that what's what's the difference between uh goggles and your and your sunglasses then what's the you know what what would be the main differences between those um, goggles can be used in different ways, um, specifically when the uh, risk of um, uh, the sunglasses or the goggles falling down uh, are high or being, uh, let's say, uh, taken away from the face are high. That could be high speed sports. Mm -hmm. um, then the goggles will be preferred because, as you can imagine, with the band stick stuck to the, 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 the goggles stuck to the face, have less capabilities to fly away. Uh, you can find that in sports like uh, free ride skiing, for example, alpine skiing actually uh, in the everyday life, uh, parachutism. We have a lot of our athletes that climb up the mountains and then uh, fly, <laughs> uh, fly on, on the Crazy. way back down. Yeah. Uh, and so, of course, for 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 these people, uh, goggles will bring them a much higher field of protection, a rear of protection, because in these high speeds, of course, the air uh, is going to be much stronger uh, going through to the eyes. So in this specific case, uh, it can be good. Uh, however, we do have some in-between products. Julbo launched two years ago a very unique model of goggles called the Quick Shift. The Quick Shift is a model that we use commonly in the uh, ski mountaineering. We have a lot of our athletes using it. It's a goggle that you could see in the everyday life. But the little uh, detail is that you can unplug the bottom frame. By unplugging this bottom frame means that you can keep a goggle on even when you are practicing some endurance sports. Because of the airflow, the fog is not going to be built up quickly, quickly. But on top of that, taking out the bottom uh, parts of the goggle means that it's going to be less contact foam uh, on the face, and this will be reducing the sensation of heat that you could get with average goggles. So we do have in-between solutions sometimes that can be very handy. Well, yeah, yeah, so that's that's fantastic, and yeah, and that I guess you've got the the, the full range covered off. So I guess for eye protection is is maybe more uh, it's more than just glasses and goggles, isn't it? Really, I guess is yeah, it's it's more. And so just just ro rolling that back a little bit to when, when Kathy and I I think first spoke about doing this subject. One of the things for me was um, doing a lot of um, stuff close to water or close by water and that wearing wearing some wearing eye protection for to, to to protect you from from that so can you just describe to me a little bit more about different lights i suppose is that that that, that, that might be the best way to put it yep to make it very simple because um it's actually a very technical field and mm. i'm uh, even myself know a very small uh, part of this very highly technical field but i know enough uh, to, to, to give you some good advice. Uh, very simply, uh, the UV light uh, is very dangerous for the eyes. This specific UV light is, uh, cannot be seen with our eyes. So uh, we see on our side the, the, the clarity, uh, that the, 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 the light that comes through uh, um, the sunglasses into the eyes, but this ultraviolet uh, light uh, is very harmful. And you can't see it. Uh, if I would be very extreme in my uh, in, in my sentences, I would say that you should pretty much avoid going mountaineering uh, in hours between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, because of these UV lights being uh, that much concentrated in the air. Uh, right. On top of that, the more you're going to be climbing up into the mountains, the more UV light you're going to get. Uh, the more there's going to be some white sceneries that potentially can be snow and reflection, uh, once again, the more UV light will be uh, coming through. So all of that means that it is super dangerous to go into the mountains, to go mountaineering, if you don't have good uh, eyewear equipment. You must need uh, the uh, category four, uh, at least, or polarized lenses that will cut off as much as possible UV light. Uh, in order for you to enjoy your activity into the mountains. 
to make it very easy, just like a cap, just like a hat. Uh, for a lot of mountaineering people, it wouldn't make sense to go into the mountains without wearing a hat. It's exactly the same when it comes to uh, high protective uh, sunglasses. Uh, we need to, to, to be protected against these uh, UV light that can really cause severe damage uh, to to the eyes and most commonly severe damage that you can't even fix after that. Mm. So yeah. we have to and that, I, I guess the one that always comes to mind is cataract. That's only one mm. out of so many other um, uh, damages that the UV lights can, can bring. So once again, uh, enjoy the mountains, uh, be, uh, be, be protective because you'll really enjoy it even more. And you just mentioned really briefly about a lens category there. Just to explain a little bit more about that for me, about if you don't mind, what are the difference between lenses and what is it, yeah, what are the lens categories? So when it comes to the categories, uh, this is like a scale that we use to uh, give some information about uh, what is the level of protection we bring with our sunglasses. Uh, today, there's uh, four different types of categories of protection that are built up on a specific scale. Uh, to make it very simple, without giving you specific uh, percentage of what we call visible light transmission, so that's the amount of light going through uh, the sunglasses, uh, category zero is lenses that are completely clear. So then uh, the visible light transmission is very high because it means that uh, you can wear them specifically at night time, for example, when the uh, weather is very um, cloudy. Then the more the lenses will become dark, the less the visible light transmission will be going through the lenses directly into your eyes. And then uh, the more the protective um, scale, that could call it this way, will be, uh, will, will be high. Um, so there's really category zero, one, two, three, four. Five doesn't exist. <laughs> that would be the, that would be completely dark. Um, to give you an idea, what should we remind as what do we need? Um, when it comes to the mountains, spending a lot of time up in the mountains, that would be category three with some polarization. That would be mandatory or a category four, one or the other. Specifically, for people that have clear eyes, uh, for people that are not used to go into the mountains um, like uh, on a regular basis, these uh, populations will need a high protective uh, categories of, of lenses. I think it's really important to say here that um, the whole area, depending on what brand of sunglasses you buy, the whole yep. area of what type of lenses to go for can be pretty murky because lots of different companies will use different marketing terminology and it can just get so confusing. And I know Jilbo um, changed uh, quite recently from naming the different lenses to just a really simple category, excuse me, Category zero, one, two, three, four, and it's so easy to understand, um, which uh, makes it a lot easier to, to, to sell them, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it does help. It, it does help. Uh, and that's very important because um, depending on the, the usage of the sunglasses, and once again, if we talk about sunglasses to uh, go on the seaside or sunglasses that uh, would go for the mountaineering, then all these requirements, this uh, percentage of visible light transmission are very important. So it's a legal fact that all the brands must communicate exactly about these figures. So if you have a closer look on uh, Julbo, but not only Julbo, all our, uh, all our friends, our competitor friends, uh, we all do, and we all have to um, precise that specifically. And so you can find it on Julbo website, like on each of our competitors' websites, of course. Well, there is also another legal reason because um, you cannot use category four sunglasses for driving. Um, Absolutely. If you use category four sunglasses or mountaineering level sunglasses for driving in the UK, certainly, if you have an accident, it's unlikely you'll be insured. Um, Absolutely. Plus, if they have the little um, side curtains as well, um, yep. 
if you're driving and you go to look over your shoulder to check to see if something's coming, you can't see because uh, yep. the glasses are designed to do a fantastic job of keeping yeah. light out. A blinker in that, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, exactly. So, uh, yeah, don't don't drive any mountaineering glasses, please. <laughs> nope, not a good idea. <laughs> you mentioned a couple of times, Barnaby, about uh, polarisation. What's what's what does that what does that mean? How would does that so, polarization is, is very simple. It's very simple uh, to to understand. It's you have to imagine that like a type of filter that will so it's lots of lines. You have to imagine that like lots of lines that will filter all the light that comes from underneath where the sunglasses are sitting. And so we know that. Uh, when you go skiing, when you drive on a road that is wet, for example, uh, when the sun is, when the light is, uh, is uh, reflecting on the road, uh, then the amount of light coming into your eyes becomes very difficult to stand. Mm. Uh, and so in this specific case scenario, the polarization becomes very useful because as, you, as I've said, this polarization filter, so the, the way these lines are designed inside the lenses, will just cut off the glare coming from underneath. So that's absolutely fantastic, and it will help a lot. Jules Beau even went a little bit further when it comes to these uh, polarization filters. Today, we are one of the only brands in the world to use these half polarization filters. So why would we use half and not a full polarization filter? The idea is that when you go skiing, for example, it's, of course, as, as you can imagine, very uh, comfortable to go skiing with a polarization lens because every time the sun will reflect on the snow, you will have this visual comfort, not having too much glare coming from the top, which is the natural light and uh, the, the, the reflection on the ground, on, on the snow. But taking away all this uh, glare from the ground, from the bottom part, means that it's also taking away all the ideas of contrast. So for the uh, performance skiers, this can be a problem. Julbo developed this very specific 50% polarization filters, means that it's comfortable enough to cut off the majority of the glare that's coming down or coming from, from, from the down and up into the eyes, but still gives you the capability to point out the different types of snow, specifically the ice, for example, when it's needed. So we do play then with all the types of technicity of, of lenses, filters, depending on what we're looking for. I see, yeah, that's amazing. That, I guess it is, it's that texture of the ground that you're going to be looking for when you move at speed skiing, I suppose, isn't it? Which, like you say, yep. if you eliminate all of that, suddenly you can end up in a bit of difficulty, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's and that's made me think about lens color as well. So I've previously used like yellow lenses, for example. Was it yellow lenses on on snowy snowier ground to as as opposed to is it would is that the right thing to do? Was that and why is that it's, important? Look, to make it very very simple, um, you can find it on pretty much everywhere on the internet. Uh, you just type in chromatic circle. Chromatic circle is. A, pretty much all the colors of, um, that exist. And if you want to see some specific terrain that would be adapted to the sports discipline you're looking into, if it's, let's say, uh, trail running, uh, trail running, you're going to be looking into a specific terrain that's going to be close to the brownish color. Then you need to choose lenses that will be at the complete opposite on this chromatic circle. This is how it works. It's as simple as that. We can bring some little adjustments, of course, but to make it easy, uh, this chromatic circle is very useful. After, to give you just a couple of ideas, first of all, when we talk about the uh, color flash, the color flash is what we see from the outside. When you see someone with sunglasses on and you see the blue color flash, a green, sometimes a pink color flash, all of that has absolutely no specific features. It's only and pure style. The only color that would bring a slight difference is the silver flash. The silver flash will slightly uh, reduce uh, the luminosity, the, the, the light going through the lenses. But except from the silver flash, no specific use, it's only style. When we talk about uh, lens color, it's from what we can see looking from the inside of the sunglasses through outside. And then, Depending on the colors we will be using, we will have some specific features. 
as you've been talking about, when we talk about this yellow base lenses, this will naturally amplify the sensation of light. In fact, it doesn't do that much, but it gives us uh, the sensation that there's more light. That's going to be absolutely fantastic uh, when you will be uh, in some forest, for example, uh, trail running or, or, or cycling, like mountain biking. Uh, we also have some lenses, for example, these that are pink with a pink color base. The pink color base is absolutely fantastic because uh, it has a bit of yellowish color base that will naturally enhance the, the, uh, the, 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 the light amplifying, but it will also enhance the contrast because of the red tones. So there's lots of different ways we can play with the color base of the lenses. Uh, we know, for example, that the brownish uh, color inside the lenses will naturally uh, break the luminosity that you can get when you are in the mountains or when you have a lot of luminosity, like uh, when you are practicing activities on the snow. So once again, uh, plenty of ways we can personalize the lenses uh, to make sure that it feels the most comfortable, the most accurate to uh, the sports dis disciplines you're thinking of practicing. Wow. And then do, 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 your, do the, the glasses um, come with different lenses? Oh, you, mean, you, you mean different materials? Well, no, no. Can you take those lenses out and put different ones in? Do they come or is it so just... Most commonly, Jubo didn't go into that um, changing lenses because we have um, what we call photochromatic lenses. Mm. Uh, when we talk about photochromatic lenses, in fact, uh, inside the lenses, uh, we um, have some photochromatic components that will react to the outside luminosity. And so the idea of that is that uh, when you go in the mountains, for example, that's the best example, we know that the weather conditions change faster than when we are in a plane, mm. as simple as it is. And the idea is that depending on if the weather becomes uh, nice and sunny or when suddenly there's some clouds, uh, the idea is not to change every two minutes uh, of uh, lenses. The idea is to have, hopefully, lenses that will adapt to the outside luminosity. So that's the purpose of the photochromatic lenses that we use. In order to, to for these uh, photochromatic lenses to work correctly, um, it's actually very, very, um, it's a very complex process. We actually use a specific material called Trivex. So Trivex is slightly similar to polycarbonate lenses, but doesn't have any mechanical stress when uh, we uh, produce the lenses. The, the lenses are actually uh, casted, heated between 12 and 17 hours. So it's a very, very long process. And during the heat of the lenses, during the, the cast, we add the photochromatic components inside the lenses, which means that them photochromatic components are not sensitive to the outside temperatures, for example, as it was 15 years ago when we used to apply at the time just a film, a, a coating on top of the lenses. So yeah, wow. that's what we use today. For, for you to understand very sim simply, today Julbo has the widest range of photochromatic lenses on the market. Category 2 to 4 uh, polarization, category 2 to 4 uh, with half polarization, we have category 1 to 3 a high contrast, category one to three light amplifier, category zero to three uh, with a gray base. And so depending on what you want, we should pretty much have the good lenses for you. <laughs> I think that's a really important point because there was definitely sort of, as you're saying, years ago, people were saying that uh, our oh, photochromatic lenses in a high altitude environment, it just gets too cold and they don't work. Was, but that's just yeah. not the case with your boat because of your manufacturing processes, which is- It really does have some impact. It does have some impact, definitely, but nothing to compare to what it was before. Yeah. Uh, today, our, our photochromatic lenses, some of them at least, some of them that we use specifically for the mountains, have this label that's called non-temperature sensitive. And it works perfectly well. It's absolutely fantastic to use. Yeah, super. So um, a lot of the glasses Barnaby, I think I don't think it's. I think it's fair to say they're not made of glass anymore. Um, but um, are they all polycarbonate? The, the, there's pretty much three different types of um, materials that can be used. Uh, as you've said, the, the mineral, the mineral glass, uh, is very famous for its 
a very high optical clarity. Uh, so that can be very comfortable in, 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 many, uh, in many ways, but it comes with um, side effects that are not that good. For example, the, the lenses are very heavy. And on top of that, they will most commonly break. Mm. So it's not the best when you're going to be practicing outdoor sports in pretty much places where you could potentially fall or have some bumpy activities. So that's why the polycarbonate is mostly used. Polycarbonate is injected. Uh, it's, it's made through, uh, through, through fast injection. Uh, the main characteristics of polycarbonate are that uh, the material is very uh, resistant to the impact, but on top of that is very lightweight. Uh, the optical clarity is of course still very, very good. Um, and then, as I've said a little bit early on, for the photochromatic lenses in our range, we use this Trevex, which is pretty much the same as the polycarbonate, at least as resistant and as lightweight, but with even better optical clarity. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, and I guess um, we've kind of not really touched on how you should fit your sunglasses either, because if you come in and there's a case and there's loads to choose from, we can sort of um, talk you through the differences and, and why some might be more applicable to others, because they're not all made in different sizes, are they? Some are actually designed to be a small fitting sunglass. Um, some are designed to be larger fitting. We've all got different size heads, of course. And uh, so you need to make sure that the, the ones that you're trying on fit, you can mold those sort of soft arms comfortably around your head. Um, and the weight distribution should be equal between your arms and your nose, I think. Is that right? Yeah, the, the, that's the distribution weight. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, the balance weight uh, must be as much as possible equal. We've all experienced at some point, uh, I wouldn't say with Jibo, but in my past life, uh, <laughs> some uh, sunglasses you know, that were sliding on the nose. Yes. Uh, we've all experienced that. We've all experienced sunglasses sometimes that were even touching our cheeks. And then we were losing all the features, properties of grip when it becomes bumpy on, on a bike or when running, for example. Uh, so yes. The fit is super important. It's important, of course, for, for, for the style because we are all today uh, in this mood of taking selfies of ourselves, sharing our stories. So yes, the fit is very important, but when it comes once again to uh, practicing your, 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 your favorite sports and disciplines, you will be very careful about different aspects. Uh, Jubo, we use, for example, a specific terminology like medium as M, most of our bestsellers today have a M as medium version. That, for example, the Shield, we have the Shield M. Uh, we have another product very famous called the Camino. We're launching next year in two months' time, the Camino M. And even if you look a bit further down, we do have a lot of our models with different um, size that's explicitly written down as large or medium. You can quickly go a little bit further down in uh, the um, what we call nose bridge space. And that's calculated in millimeters. Uh, the smaller will be your nose or the bigger will be your cheeks. You will then be looking at getting some nose bridge as thin as possible because then the sunglasses will catch the grip as high as possible on the nose. Someone like me, that's maybe more of a Latin with a big nose, I'm gonna be looking at uh, having a nose bridge that's gonna be slightly bigger. Uh, because then I don't need the sunglasses to be caught directly on top of my nose. And on top of that, it will fit better with my, with, with, with my face. With your face, yeah. There's a last point. The, 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 the length of the temples is also something that you can find in between all different types of sunglasses, uh, depending on people, depending on if you're cycling. If you're cycling, you don't want your temples to hit what you obstruct with a helmet. So you will be looking at sunglasses with temples that will be shorter as for the length. Last and um, but not least, uh, how can I say? Uh, I forgot the word. The in curve. English. The, the curve. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's okay. The curve yeah. of, 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 the, of the frame, of, in fact, of the lenses can be very important. If you need um, a good uh, protective uh, sunglasses, you will be looking for some curved sunglasses. That's what you will be looking when it comes to mountaineering, but also when it comes, for example, to sailing. You need this wraparound style mm. lenses that will give you maximum protection. Uh, and so uh, the, if you have 
uh, a face that has maybe bigger cheeks, a smaller nose, you're going to look for a base four, base five. So that's pretty much flat uh, curve that will then fit you perfectly well. Awesome. Amazing. I'm really conscious we're into the final minute of, of this, <laughs> uh, Barnaby. So I was just going to say, yeah, is, is there a quick, the best tip that you'd give for goggles or glasses? The best tip I would give is definitely to try them on. Yeah, definitely. If, definitely. If, if Take time, to, try them on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. If it's to practice some specific sports that will require um, like bumpy activities that will require uh, high speed, that will require practicing in extreme environment, all of these different um, uh, calls must mean that you will need to find some glasses that will fully fit to your activities. That would be my, my best recommendation. So definitely take the time to try them on. Awesome. Wow, that was uh, that was incredible, Barnaby. That was just so much knowledge. How amazing! <laughs> it is just fascinating. Well, yeah, we're sort of patently aware that we haven't done a great deal of talking in this episode, which is relatively unusual for both of us, I think. That's but that, that, one that, expert. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just it's those, those people that we can speak to forever or listen to forever. And so that was episode twenty-two. That was uh, sunglasses and goggles. Uh, I, I. As, as it, yeah, we need, we need to work on the innuendos on these. We've, we've slipped a bit on these <laughs> ones with, with Ouchies' last one and I, I on this one. Uh, but it's when we're getting the sensible guys to come in and talk to us, though. I think that's yeah, the problem. Yeah, Not yeah. like you and I there's, messing there's around. There's more coming. There's more coming. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I've been Wayne. Uh, thank you for listening. And I've been Cathy. And you can find out more about protecting your eyes on our Joe Brown Outdoor Academy uh, website at www.joebrownoutdooracademy.com. And also you can see the lovely range of jewelry glasses that we sell in our shops at www.climbershop.com.